inpatient medicine and hospitalist medicine is about clinical plans pretty much you know you see a patient you have a thought process as to what's going on based on the existing findings history and physical exam and labs and you come up with a plan as to how you're going to help them hi guys and welcome to quick guys for medicine my name is Fatai and I'm a hospitalist and assistant professor of medicine here in South Carolina um, on this channel we'll talk about medicine and topics around medical education so feel free to subscribe and uh, hit the notification button so you can get the videos as we upload them all right so today i'll be talking about how to construct clinical plans because in internal medicine that's perhaps one of the most important things that we do you know we admit a patient from ed for example how do we structure our plan to make sure that the patient is getting what they're supposed to get. Now, there's many different ways that you can think about this. Um, the way that I prefer is that you have clinical assessments or problem lists, problem list based plan, meaning you write a problem and you expand under the problem what you're going to do regarding that problem. Now, how you expand on that problem, that you can do in many ways, but the way that I always prefer and the way that I, I know that tends to be more practical and more uh, uh, that helps communicate better with the other uh, members of the team is to have that expansion in five categories. Number one, when you write a problem, it's not enough that you just write the problem, but you want to establish to whoever is reading the reason why you say that problem is there. Sometimes it's not confirmed, sometimes it is suspected, but you still have to say why it is, why you're suspecting that particular problem. So you write a problem, let's just say, you write, um, you know, acute and chronic heart failure will reduce ejection fraction, for example. You have to say right under that why you think that is the, uh, you know, the particular problem that you're dealing with. Okay, what are some things that you you would write under there? Signs of heart failure exacerbation, for example, you know, shortness of breath, uh, you know, bilateral or extremity edema, you know, rails on exam, elevated BMP, pulmonary vascular congestion and chest x-ray. These are components that support the problem that you say that you say exists. So once you write a problem, you have to establish with data what supports that clinical problem. The next thing you want to uh, talk about would be serious, other serious conditions, other related serious conditions that you have ruled out. So for example, you have, you know, acute or chronic heart failure with ejection fraction. It's not uncommon to find that these patients will also have, you know, acute coronary syndrome as well, you know, as a trigger for that exacerbation or even new onset heart failure. So you want to say, for example, you check your troponin, what is the troponin looking like? You check your EKG, what's the EKG looking like? Um, and, you know, some other, other problems that could almost present like, uh, heart failure exacerbation. So, number one, stop, once you say a problem, say why you think that problem is the problem. Number two, other differentials that you have ruled out or other associated serious conditions that you've ruled out to make sure that you're not missing anything. Number three will be clearly what you're doing for this problem. All right, so with acute heart failure, uh, reduce, acute and chronic heart failure, reduced ejection fraction, um, you're saying, for example, um, you know, IV diuretics, you know, uh, uh, resuming uh, GDMT, go direct to medical therapy for heart failure, you know, your ACE and ARBs, your beta blockers, you know, the SGLT2 inhibitors and all of the all of the other medications that we would use for heart failure reduced ejection fraction. You know, if you're getting, if you're repeating an echo, for example, you should say that as part of your actual plan. Um, it's also important with a case of acute or chronic heart failure reduced ejection fraction that you've put on top of that list, you know, the reason why you say it is acute or chronic as opposed to just acute, you know, uh, uh, heart failure reduced ejection fraction because our chronic basically means that they already have the disease now you have an exacerbation of an ex chronically existing disease so again support your assessment by data rule out other serious conditions talk say exactly what you're doing in terms of treating that particular condition and further investigating and the fourth will be supportive measures like things like daily weights things like strict input and output these things are not necessarily you know uh as they're part of the plan yeah but they tend to tend to be you know peripheral in terms of the things that you're actually doing supportive 
other supportive measures uh, will be put in that, that fourth category. And then finally, the fifth category should represent, should, you know, contain uh, our consults that you're requesting. The reason why I put that as last is that no matter what you do as a clinical, as a, as a clinician, you always want to reserve the the ability to be able to think about clinical processes yourself before you eventually involve somebody else. Meaning you went to medical school, you know, you're in training or you're practicing, you definitely have some understanding within that scope that you're working because that's your domain. You have to be able to give an assessment before you even get, you know, consultants involved. There's two reasons I always say to that you need to get, you know, a consultant involved. Number one, things that are outside of the scope of your practice. So you're not, as an internist, as a general internist, for example, as a hospitalist, you're not gonna do a colonoscopy, right? You're not gonna do a left heart catheterization. You're not gonna do, you know, so many other things that you need consultants to come and do. That's one reason to get consult. The second reason to get consult will be, um, uh, for example, sharing liability. Because sometimes you have a thought, you have a suspicion, but you want somebody else to come and confirm it so that when you, when that other person comes and confirm it, then it, it's, it's more of like a, a support to your, your thought process, sharing liability. And, and those, for me, I think would be the two main reasons why you would get a console um, uh, evaluation. But anyways, that's how to think about clinical plans. Number one, you write is problem-based, problem list. You write the problem. First component is establishing data to support that problem that you've listed down. Second, other serious differentials that are associated uh, uh, with that particular problem that you've ruled out or you're attempting to rule out. Number three, specific plan for taking care of that problem. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, number four will be supportive supportive measures. And finally, it will be you know consult, consult requests. And that's it uh, for this video. I'll see you guys on the next video.